morning, Quadcopter 101 here, and today's shout out goes to McLaren Craze. McLaren Craze was first to say first in one of my recent videos, and thus wins the shout out, so congratulations. Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here, with a review of something neat, folks. This is the Top Test TS301 Digital Anonometer. What is an anonometer? Well, it's a means of measuring wind speed. Now, when you're flying these little drones, it's kind of important to know how much wind you got out there because some of these drones can't fly in very high winds. And it'd be a good idea to know actually what is the wind speed before you set your drone up into the air. And I'll go into detail a little later about wind speeds versus type of drones, you know, what when it's safe to fly and when it's not safe to fly. Let's just talk about this particular anemometer first. Um, first off, it comes with what you see here, nice little carrying case, or actually it's a little... Uh, felt uh, bag to store the anemometer. You get the user manual. It comes in five different languages, I believe, uh, including English, uh, Chinese, German, French, Italian, and Spanish. Um, you get a set of batteries for it. There are three AAA Duracell batteries uh, that go in the back of this. And also, you get the box that comes with it. But let's talk about the anemometer. First off, it has a nice, large... 2.6 inch uh, display back and it's a backlit display so let me turn it on and show you the backlight turn it on and hold that button down let's do that again and there's the backlit display so i hope that's coming through but um with this again you can measure wind i mentioned now it's very sensitive it measures it's capable of measuring wind speeds of 1.5 to 67 miles per hour or 2.5 to 108 kilometers per hour for those of you in the metrics. Um, it also displays in, in uh, miles per hour, kilometers per hour, knots, that's nautical miles per hour, feet per minute, feet per second, and meters per second. And also it's capable of displaying maximum, minimum, and average wind speed. Additionally, it measures temperature. Right now it's 65.8 here in my basement. And it always measures it in centigrade or in Fahrenheit by pressing that button there. Um, the range of the measurements for temperature are from minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Or if you're in uh, metric, that's minus 20 degrees centigrade to 60 degrees centigrade. It also measures relative humidity. So right now it's 40.3% relative humidity here in my basement. So, and that range goes from 0 to 99.9%. Um, I mentioned the Powered by the three Duracell AAA batteries that go in the back here. One thing I didn't like about this is you, it requires you to have one of those little micro screwdrivers to be able to open and close the battery compartment. And that's because of some countries there is a law <laughs> that you have to do that so that little kids can't get the batteries and swallow them. Uh, but uh, here in the U.S., I would appreciate, you know, it's, this is kind of hard to open. Okay, and I'd like to remove batteries so that they don't leak when I'm not using something. So uh, I would rather if you had the option to have a both this screw that you could remove or use a clip, you know, the normal clip type opening. But hopefully that will they'll improve that in a future version of this. Uh, but I mentioned uh, the wind speed levels. Let's, or actually, before we go into wind speed levels, let's go over the buttons on this. Okay, this is your power button. It turns it on and off, as you see here. Um, you can turn on the backlight by pressing and holding this button here. And with this button, and this also has a, a feature that you can instantaneously uh, hold a wind speed reading, say you're, you're measuring wind and you say, okay, I got it just right. What is that wind before? You're holding it up over your head and you really can't read it, but you can press that button there and that will hold the reading so you can bring it down and take a look at the screen. Again, this switches between centigrade and Fahrenheit. And this button here switches between the different units for wind speed from uh, feet per minute, feet per second, meters per second, I hope that's coming in, kilometers per hour, knots, and miles per hour. So that, that's how you switch between the two. And again, it measures maximum and minimum wind speed and average wind speed. Now let's talk about knots or wind levels, <laughs> okay? <laughs> uh, I'm going to go into detail right now on wind levels and your drones. Those of you out there, you know, what, how do you use this with your drone? Okay, and anyway, I'm going to go out and demonstrate it too. When we, I'll, we'll take it out in the field and show you how to use this. But first off, there's what's called wind levels, and it's different levels of wind speeds. Okay, let me go over. They go from zero to six, and wind level zero is from zero to one mile per hour. 
Uh, wind level one is from one to three mile per hour. Wind level two is from four to seven mile per hour. So then wind level zero through two are good for uh, most indoor toy drones can fly in wind levels one through two. Um, indoor, I'm talking about little tiny brushed motor drones. You know, you can fly, if you get using this to measure the wind, you should be able to, to fly in up to seven miles per hour out there with a particular drone. Now, I, I, let me give you a rule of thumb, folks. If you do know your drone's maximum uh, flight speed, you don't want to fly at that speed. You know, say your drone is capable of flying 30 miles per hour. Uh, you don't want to go out there at 30 miles per hour and set up your drone. A good rule of thumb, a safe rule of thumb to fly is to fly no greater than two-thirds of the maximum speed of your drone. That way you'll be able to control it and we'll be able to bring it back home. You know, so, say if you got 30 miles per hour and the drone's behind you, it's not going to be able to fly into the wind. It's just going to be hovering in place. So, you know, again, you have to have some speed to be able to bring it back home. So that's why we talk about two-thirds don't go flying any greater than two-thirds the maximum speed of your drone. And with that in mind, let's go into wind level three. Now, wind level three is from eight to 12 miles per hour. That's usually good for outdoor brush motor drones, and most brushless motor drones will be able to fly in that also. Then there's wind level four. That's from 13 to 18 miles per hour. Um, those brush motor drones are going to have we're going to struggle in, in wood level four. You want to keep them indoors on those days. But most of the brushed motor or brushless motor drones do have the power to go flying uh, in wind level speed four from 13 to 18 miles per hour. So keep that in mind. Now we're talking about wind level five, where 19 to 24 miles per hour and wind level six, uh, 25 to 31 miles per hour. Those are kind of extreme wind speeds, and I would not recommend you flying any drone, <laughs> or most drones, in that type of wind speed. Now, there are, you know, drones, you know, like the Phantoms, I think they're advertised capable of flying 30 miles per hour. Uh, but again, using that two-thirds rule, that's only 20 miles per hour, so you're just barely able to fly in that wind level five safely, okay? You'll be able to hover in it, but uh, you know, again, I would not send the drone out and about because there is a chance you wouldn't be able to recover it if you're try trying to fly into headwind. So that is the Top T's TS-301. Let's take it out in the field and I'll demonstrate how to use this. So hope you enjoy this demonstration. Good morning, Quite Comfort 101 here. Now welcome to Presque Isle State Park here in Erie, Pennsylvania. Miles and miles of deserted beaches. Uh, deserted this time of year. In the summer, they're packed. <laughs> okay. Um, I came here because this is a good spot for wind. There's always wind here, and I wanted to demonstrate the top piece, the S01, and how to use it. Okay, you turn it on, press the on-off button like so, and we start getting a reading in meters per second. Let's switch those meters to kilometers per hour, actually miles per hour since of the U.S. There we go through. Here we go, miles per hour. So we got 13.3 instantaneous readings. Now what we can do, folks, is put it on max and that'll keep updating whatever the maximum wind speed that it's seen and it'll just keep doing that right now it's 13.15 is the maximum wind gust it's seen and it'll maintain that until a higher wind gust comes along okay so right now the highest it's seen was about 13.15 now pressing it again we get the minimum wind speed that it's seen which was 10.23 and pressing it one more time we get the average wind speed that's going to keep on updating based on the wind that it's seeing right now. The average is around 11.01, 10.34, 9.05, because the wind's dying right down right now. 7.06, 8.0. So the average moves around quite a bit. But right now, again, going back to max, that is the maximum wind speed that we see. So coming out of that, then average, actually, uh, to turn off. That. Let's go back to the normal readings by turning it off and on. And we, it's going to be going up and down, showing what the value of the instantaneous wind speed is. But again, mostly you'd be interested in max, average, and minimum. Well, the minimum, not so much. Now, notice the temperature 6.9 degrees centigrade. We can switch that to Fahrenheit, 44.6 degrees Fahrenheit, 45.3 relative humidity. Now, switching the units back to kilometers per hour, miles, kilometers per hour. 
for my uh, for everybody except those in the United States. Here's the readings, instantaneous reading in kilometer per hour. And uh, going to the max, there, 24.58 seems to be the max. Now, again, to use this, you got to face directly into the wind. Right now, I feel the, the wind in my face, so that's why I got it there. Uh, minimum was 12.02 kilometers per hour, averaging out to around 13, 14 miles kilometers per hour. So that's how you use this thing. Pretty simple, pretty easy to use, and pretty nice to have, especially if you're a drone pilot and you want to know whether it's too windy for your particular drone. Right now, most drones, well, 13 plus knots, miles per hour. Um, most of the Russian motors drones can fly today. Uh, the Russian motors, you know, would have a hard time on today, flying today here at Prescott State Park. And keep in mind, nobody can fly here at Prescott State Park because um, it's not legal. <laughs> Pennsylvania State Parks don't let you fly, so I used to fly here until they made it illegal. So that's the Top G's TS-301. Hope you enjoyed this review. This is Quadcopter 101, signing out. Hi, Quadcopter101 here again. Hey, if you want to get your own shout out in one of my future videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel. It's real simple. Just go to my channel page and click on that subscribe. And also make sure to click that bell button right next to the subscribe button. That way you get notified when I release a brand new video immediately and give you a chance to get that first shout out. So give it a try, folks.